Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What uh, now? How how did you make it in the first place? It, it looks like an interesting type of marker. It works pretty well, I understand. Uh, yes. Basically, I, I I just designed and made it for uh, teaching my spoon plugging courses I get out there with, mm -hmm. and I wanted something that would stand up as high. Uh, out of the water as possible so we can see it in the roughest weather. So it stands weather. up vertically when it's It stands floating. vertically. Mm -hmm. uh, this end I just uh, I drilled a hole after I got through to plug it into so that it just wouldn't unwind in the boat and after I wind it up and, and go to plug it and get it plugged in I just hook it right here on this little hook so that this all won't uh, unwind and come out in the boat. Oh yeah. And when I go ready to drop it then I just unhook it here and pitch it out into the water and it, of course it just unwinds down to uh, any predetermined stop. So it's got to stop right on that, the got, end there. I have, a, I have a, a coil right here, a little coil pan. It goes all the way through the, the, lower, the marker oh, yeah. and it's bent down over here and locked. So okay. my first mark is, is my first marked color is 15 feet. Okay. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna put markers around my 12 foot uh, contour that we talk about on bars and so forth, where we, where we do not have a channel break line and we're just marking out a, a contour, I, I'm putting my first mark at 15 feet, but I drop it at the 12 feet that we oh. talk about. Okay. So I just unwind. Uh, if I'm going to be doing the, the contour, I just unwind and then latch it. Clip it on there. Just latch it right on my little catch there. And then it runs freely through the right, end. Right, I put it right through the end then. Oh. Now, she will stop right on the 15 foot. We'll throw it on the 12 foot contour. And of course, it stops and I have the little bit of slack. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's too much slack, you can always take one more wind and rehook it. Re if it's not enough, you can do the okay. same thing. But then when you go to wind it up, I just double it back. And, 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 and wind it right back up, and it's ready for the next throw. Huh. If I'm gonna to go to a, a, a channel break line, that's uh, say it's averaging uh, 20, 20 feet deep, then I would just unhook it. it after the 50 foot marker, wait a minute, you, you have to unhook it both places because you can't unwind it and hook them through that. It, it doesn't work. Okay. I'm a little bit tighter and tight. Tell Jim to loosen this up a little bit here. It's just a little bit tight and a little bit difficult to get out of there. Now that's just the wire that you just the hook, just the turned in a, a wire. circle. To... Uh, 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 we'll get to how this was made and so forth a little later. Okay. But if I'm going to reset after my 15 foot mark, I go every five feet with a mark. Now it's black. Mm -hmm. That's my 20 feet. Okay. But if I'm going to be marking a 20-foot uh, channel break line, I don't want I want to have slack, so I would either go to my next mark, which is five feet, which I've got is green. Mm -hmm. Now, if five foot of slack was too much, if I want to use the, the 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 25 feet, I would just mark it and hook it. If I want less, I just take another wrap or two and hook it. But oh. I stay back off of my a 20 foot marker and after I tie it off here and that's to keep this in place after I tie it off there then I come back down here and hook it back hook it back through but it's Just hook it back through the eye now I have got me a permanent marker that is now 20 1 2 3 feet, three feet. Oh, yeah. now on any depth that you drop these if this marker goes to the bottom it will float about this deep in the water. Uh -huh. If for any reason, and sometimes it does, if for any reason it tangles, if it hooks up here and tangles and does not go all the way to the bottom, it will still float. It will float both markers, uh -huh. but now it's this deep in the water. Oh, okay. So, so, so if you don't, uh, you know, if you throw your marker and you're this deep in the water. And your weight's off the bottom. Yeah, pick it back up and untangle it. Throw okay. you another one or whatever just to get it untangled. Now. On these, I haven't uh, gone through it and, and powered them down any, but this loop right here is the first design and the first tie, and I've got two coils. 
Mm -hmm. And I tried to stop these coils down here so they wouldn't hook, but this is a little too much, so it needs to be trimmed off a little bit. And it won't it won't hang as bad if you if you. Oh, hang I up. see. Yeah, it's sticking out. And the same thing down here. Uh, this one doesn't hang up very much because it's got one loop and sticks straight down. Mm -hmm. This is because I did this. This was for another job, and when I redesigned it, I had it came down and looped like so. Both ends were hid, mm -hmm. and when I came up with this slip out design, I clipped it and recalled it, and it made it just right. But the newer ones that I made, I made the two calls, and it's too many. Mm. I have to go back and get under and tie it so that so that. As One it's is. unwinding and sliding off of here, it can't get back in there. Okay. But that's just a little repair, a little bit of a repair you do. Okay. Now, on my line, I had the, the red was the 15, the black was the 20, the green is 25. <laughs> Again, you can loosen these things up to where you can they don't have to be so tight. Mm -hmm. oh, good catch. And <laughs> just a minute. Five more feet. Purple is, is 30. Five more feet. Red is 35. Five more feet. 40. And then there's few more feet left from the from the 40 okay. but if you were going to drop on the 40 this would be slack if I were going 40 feet deep I would just unwind let the whole thing unwind but I would still hook it in here and then it would just be slack so the reason for the accuracy in that is that you when you drop your markers at a sp specified depth you just want a few more feet so that you know those markers are going to stay there is correct that, okay uh, you've got to have some slack if you if you get it too tight you, you might be reading if you got set right on 15 feet and you're on a 15 foot break line if it's 15 feet and six inches which you might not even see the difference it could it would float off mm -hmm. and so i just i give them generally i guess i give them about three feet three feet extra so, yeah but something it's, like it's that. not going to be most of your markers aren't as accurate as this so this is going to really keep them close to where true, you want them true it keeps them it keeps them close and you predetermine uh, when you go to a fishing area, you find your brake lines are, are 20 feet deep. You just set up on the 25 uh, foot and, and latch it and run it through. And, uh, and you can use them for that time uh, next time if you're on a different lake. Okay. And then it's, it's, it's especially effective on when we're, when we're dropping our 12 foot contour to fence in our shallows and where you've got uh, lowland type features and you do not have uh, the brake line. Then mm -hmm. you you set up on a contour line, and uh, and the 15 foot drop at 12 to, feet gives, to gives us a, about a three foot yeah. slide. Now, in order to make the thing, it's just a, 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 a crystal white octagon, and it comes in a, in the yellow and green, and it comes in white and blue. Um, Looks like about two quart see, or pardon me, about a quart or two I believe quart. it's a quart. It's quart? A, yeah, it's a no, it's a quart eight ounces. Okay. Uh, any of your stores carry that. Of course, you use the soap. Now. It's a liquid detergent. Liquid detergent. Okay. Use it out, or have you wipe dumping and hold it? And, and but you get this is you want this empty. That's, that's yours. <laughs> <laughs> now, in the beginning, when I first made them, I put them in the oven and dried them so I wouldn't have any moisture. And I found out this foam rubber that you this a uh, uh, foam insulation. You buy it at uh, Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, or in a can. Uh, uh, it's a in, can. it's in a squirt can, okay. and it's just the it's just the the foam that you see all cracks and stuff. It likes moisture. It expands better in a light rain than it does solid dry. Oh. So so then I started uh, getting a lot of water in them and sloshing them around, dump the water out and leave all the all the little uh, water dimples in there I could. And I take my squirt can, my, my foam can, and I add another, it comes with a little quail, like a little straw, and I add another another one to it at, so that it will reach down through the hole. This is not here. I reach down through the hole and I reach plumb down to the bottom, turn it up and I give it just a very short squirt, just a pssst, and and you get a squirt out about so long. And I do that three times here here and here, just 
three times and then and and it's best to do three or four or five or six of them at one time and squirt them all then you just go away till it gets done swelling and depending on the heat the temperature and whatever depends on the length of time but you could do this do one in the morning go back at lunchtime take them all and they'll be swelled up like like maybe a third of the way mm -hmm. and go back and and just give them the same three squirts okay. and do all of them and by that time they they will fill up and swell up to about about up to here or maybe here just in this area after they quit swelling and, and be sure and let them dry completely every time because they're this stuff is very much like a, a, the ladies cake in the oven if if you do much to it or jar it or go back too soon it will fall just like a cake and it hmm. will not even harden ah. it will it would and then when you go back it might be hard up here but down in here will be soft and and fall and it it won't even be hard in a month after that hmm. and 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 that way you're you're you don't have any strength this is it's just for strength to fill fill it's, it in it fills it in and if you get a pocket like that it, it might ruin it because it would you'd have to drill in there or yeah. something to fill it but you don't know it till it's too late so it has so, a hard foam in it so that if you puncture it then it wouldn't it wouldn't sink or anything it would correct. still work it's, supposedly it's seal sales and i can't tell you mm -hmm. whether it really is or not i i just haven't I don't okay. know. It maybe if the water would get in there, it might saturate. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mine haven't. I haven't had that experience with it. But anyway, after you've got it to here, you just give it the same two or three shots, and and just set her up, set all of them up, and let them swell. Now they'll start coming out here just like a cone of ice cream. Hmm. And you just keep it. Just take your knife and just it's real sticky and gooey when it's when it's expanding. So you just keep it. Just slough it off, and, and then you'll go back uh, uh, 30 minutes later, and it'll be out there again. And as long as it's boiling and, and coming out here, if if you don't keep it cut off the top and clean, it'll just come down over here and just make a heck of a mess. <laughs> so it's better just to keep it wiped off or cut off. off. Now after after I've got it full, uh, be sure now, and do not put too much in in any shot. It's better to have not enough than too much. Okay. Because if you put too much on either one of your sh your shots, it will come up here and seal off and fall like a cake. Mm, that's okay. that's the most common way that it will fall is getting too much, and and it just sort of tramps itself Collapses. off. Because here's the here's the here's the 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 atmosphere, the air, and so forth. If it seals off, and and the air can't get to it lower, that's when it falls. Mm -hmm. So so you just do it little little bit at a time. You can't. You can't be too little bit of amount, but you can be too much. Too much. Okay. Okay. To to finish the thing off, then this is a, a a lawn chair that's just been wrecked, and I just cut these little aluminum tubes. They're they're two and a quarter inches, the best I remember. I cut them and and put tin foil around the bottom, uh -huh. and fold my tin foil up around the open end and then I tape it with masking tape and I have several of them and I make up my coils of wire and I just leave this end sticking out straight and this end I'll put this end down and in here I put a little kink in it so that so that it can't accidentally slip out on me and and I I just bend it enough till it will I can slip it down in there and it will stay I set them up and 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 I I clip them with uh, vice grip pliers and and set them so that they can't get away and they're going to be there because it's too hot to handle mm -hmm. after you start pouring your lead. So I, I, I've got two pairs of pliers, so I do two at a time, and I'll just clamp them and pour them full, and then I'll clamp another one and pour it full. How do you how do you seal off the bottom so that I mean, seal off the bottom with tin foil? Oh, oh, the tin, tin foil is to seal tin off foil and over the, the open okay. end and. And get it real good, and then I tape the tin foil, tape the tin foil. and tape, and my tape runs right on up on my metal, my okay. aluminum, so that I'm sure that yeah. I'm sealed. Yeah, and and you pour it, and it'll stay there. Okay, it, it, it doesn't out. go okay. out very bad. And and then I just keep it adding to my pot. Now, in order to to get this in, I took a piece of my tubing, about six eight inches long. And in the end of that tubing, I found me some saw teeth, just like a little round saw. 
and you can actually take your hand and twist that thing in. And when you twist it in, it, it reams the inside of this out just a little bit. And and also takes out the foam rubber that's, the foam. I mean, the, the foam that's filler. Yeah. And when usually when you pull it, you just pull out a plug. If not, you can go in with your knife and scratch it out. And, it, and you get this down, and I force it down. I, I force it in there. This one I've got glue around just to seal the water. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. But I push it down to where... I'm this this deep into into this neck, just about about a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch past this little past pin you see. Okay. So after I get it in, I I just take a drill and drill drill through and into the lead. You have to be really really careful when you drill into that lead because it will just stop up the drill and break it just that quick. Mm. So you just be real careful, and and this I take me a wire of any kind nail, cut off, anything, and, and I fill this hole with JB Weld. Just mix me up a little JB Weld and just plug all I can into my hole and put, put my pen in it and then set them up and, and let them dry. And then I go back and whack it off and make it as ah, pretty as... So that and this, this is merely to keep this from coming, from coming loose, out. Okay. coming out. Yeah. Okay. Because they'll stay there maybe for a while, but after time they're going to get loose and work loose yeah. and come out if you don't yeah, do that's something. Right. Then, after after I got to use them and everything, and I have everything wound up and put in the boat, this thing was forever unwinding, rolling around, and unwinding. So I needed a, a good way to uh, I needed a good way to carry it. The, that's the the weight that goes down that's, on the that's string. That's the weight that goes to you the bottom carry that. and yeah. holds me. And after you get wound up and start carrying the things around in the boat and you got a half a dozen of them or whatever and, and they're loose in the boat. Uh, of course, I start out with them in a, in a bucket, but you always wind up with them in the bottom of the boat and they jar around and everything and the darn things will roll around and unravel and you they'll unravel t 8, 10, 12, 15 feet. <laughs> so so it's, it's just nice to have a little storage. So mm -hmm. I, after I wind it up, I just plug, what I did, I got, this has been repaired. You do not cut the bottom out. Okay. This is a repaired one. But if I want to store it, I, I take my little saw that I opened this up with mm -hmm. and screw it down in there, just cut that plug out, the distance you want it, the depth you want it, and pull the whole plug out, clean it out, clean this hole out. Now I've got me a storage space oh, for my marker. Yeah. Then I just come around here. See, I can't I can't go two loops. See, I can't go two uh -huh. loops. So I just go to the tightest loop I can go and I hook and it hook right it in on. that. Yeah. And that just keeps it some, if it's enough, you maybe could get it out. But a lot of times, this when you wrap this up, it is it is clipped in so close or I could clip it in I -clip it probably, like yeah. so. Yeah. Now it can't slip out accidentally. Yeah. But do remember, if you have set, say on on fit on a, on a 15 foot, if you have have set up and latched in here for your 15 feet, I'll take time to show you that. This is a possible mistake you can have. <clears throat> I don't talk and do anything well. <laughs> You're doing quite well. <laughs> See, like I said a while ago, I've got one too many loops in it. Oh yeah. So, but if I if I went to my to my 15 foot okay. stop, you'll miss it. Yeah, I think it's just a little bit more. It's usually, there it is. is. If I go to my 15 foot stop and I seal it off, and I go through my eye down here. Now this eye is to cause it to float vertically. If you don't hook into here, it'll float like this. Mm, mm -hmm. It'll just be at an angle like that. You can still see it and use it, but this is just neat. Yeah, to have okay. it stand up. When I get done and I go to do work other places, I just wrap the thing up. And such as the jamboree where I'm teaching dropping it on the 12 foot contours, I use it day after day after day the whole week. I don't reset it or anything. I just wrap it up like this. Or each time you go to market, 
Now, I would leave it in the boat like that, mm -hmm. or I might put it right here like so. But mostly, if I'm just planting an area, I'll just leave it laid loose. But, but it in any case, if I want to hold it a little while, but if I go to store it, I'll just la latch it right there so it can't get away. Now, this oh. time when we roll it up, see, you, yeah. you, you're going to be jerking stuff and all, so you can get it to where you can't pull it out. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing you want to remember, when you go to throw this, if you unhook it and pitch it out, there's what you got. Uh, it's Yeah, you have to remember to take it out. You gotta remember to take it out, catch. whatever the depth is, and then she just unwinds. To that, to that pretty specified depth. Itself out. Great. That's it. Okay, thanks a lot, Jack. I appreciate it. That's See a you neat, guys. That's a neat one. To add